Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take a look at the cosine of the angle theta. So that's the trigonometric function, the cosine. We spell the cosine like this. So the sine of theta, we write the word sine like that. And the cosine of theta, we write the word cosine like that. And we use the symbol COS theta for the cosine of theta. And so what is the relationship there? Well, again, we have the unit circle. We have the radius equal to 1. We have the value of the, the xy coordinate right here on the point where the hypotenuse points to. And of course, the y value is this height right here. The x value is this width right there. And so the definition can be found by taking the very same triangle, drawing it over there. This is known as the hypotenuse. There's the angle theta. This is known as the adjacent side to the angle because the side here touches the angle. This is known as the opposite side because the side is opposite to the angle. That's why it's called the opposite side. And the definition of the cosine of theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Since the adjacent side represents the x value of that point right there where the hypotenuse points to, we can say that's equal to x. The hypotenuse of a unit circle is 1, so therefore the cosine of theta is equal to x. It's the x value of the point on the unit circle depending upon where the hypotenuse points to depending upon the size of the angle. Notice when the angle is small, x is a large value. When the angle becomes large, x becomes a smaller and smaller and smaller value. When the angle is 0, x is 1. When the angle is 90 degrees, x is 0. And then for any angle in between, there will be some value between 1 and 0. And here I have a list. So the cosine of 0 degrees, that means y is 0 and x will be equal to 1. So the cosine of 0 radians is equal to 1. The cosine of 90 degrees, that's right up here. You can see that the value for x goes to 0 as the angle goes to 90 degrees. What about the cosine of 30 degrees? Well, at 30 degrees, we realize that the x value there would be the square root of 3 over 2. At 45 degrees, it's the square root of 2 over 2. At 60 degrees, it's 1 half. And at 9 degrees, it's 0. So it's exactly opposite to the sine. Remember, with the sine, the sine of 0 degrees was 0, and the sine of 9 degrees was 1, and the values in between are the same, just in the opposite direction. So just for reference, let's put the values down for the sine on the right side here. So you can see that the sine of 0 degrees, which is equal to the sine of 0 radians, which is equal to 0. The sine of 30 degrees, which is equal to the sine of pi over 6 radians, that's equal to 1 half. The sine of 45 degrees is equal to the sine of pi over 4, which is equal to, and notice that 45 degrees, the x value and the y value are exactly the same, so it's the square root of 2 over 2. The sine of 60 degrees, which is the sine of 2, uh, let's see here, that's pi over 3, which is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. And finally, the sine of 90 degrees is equal to the sine of pi over 2, which is equal to 1. You see how the numbers line up. So as the cosine, as the angle gets bigger, the cosine of the angle goes from 1 to 0. As the angle gets bigger, the sine of 0 to 90 degrees goes from 0 all the way up to 1. So it's exactly in reverse. And again, the definition of the sine of the cosine is simply, for the sine it was the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, for the cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And that's how we define those functions. And those come in really handy later. Now you say, well, what about other values? What about the cosine of 22 degrees and the cosine of 68 degrees and so forth? Well, that will come later. Right now, we just need to understand the basic principles of these trigonometric functions. And then later, we'll see how we actually use them in all kinds of applications. These are very useful functions when we deal with triangles, we deal with all kinds of signs, such as physics and so forth. These become very, very important and very useful to deal with um, different, uh, what we call triangles and angles and things like that. Okay, so there we go, the cosine of theta.